Hello, and welcome to Hackalade Studio. In this video session, we demonstrate the behavior of concurrent license keys, sometimes known as floating license keys. As a reminder, for several editions of Hackalade Studio, like the professional, workgroup, or read only viewer editions, there are two different license models dedicated or concurrent. There is an article in the Frequently Asked Questions section of the online user documentation with all the details, but in a nutshell, Dedicated license keys are for exclusive use by regular, intensive users of the application, whereas the concurrent license key is for shared use across many occasional users. While the cost of concurrent key is higher, you can see the benefit for customers of being able to spread the cost across multiple users. With a concurrent license key, you may install the software on an unlimited number of PCs, but only the licensed number of simultaneous users are allowed to use the application. If the maximum number of seats has been reached, the next user will be denied access to the application until another user exits the application. Note that if you have one virtual machine with multiple users, each user will be counted as a separate seat. With virtual machines, it is also very important that the VM session be persistent. Otherwise users lose not only their license key setup, but also their personal preferences, connection setting, etc. There is no need to install and maintain a server inside your infrastructure. The number of seats being used is automatically tracked by our license server in the cloud. Let's demonstrate how a concurrent license key behaves. In our online user documentation, you will also find an article that provides the link to an admin page where you can track, in real time, the usage of your license key. My setup includes a concurrent license key for one single seat, my own computer, and also a virtual machine in the cloud so I can easily demonstrate multiple users. A concurrent license key must be entered just once by each user and validated. After that, the process should be seamless for users. If enough seats are available, all that is required is for users to open the application when they need it, then exit the application when they are done. Seat reservation and release are automatically operated by the software. Users may exit Hackalade Studio using several accepted methods. Probably the most common one is by clicking the X in the top right-hand corner of the application. You may also use the menu File, then Exit. Or you may use the keyboard shortcut, for example in Windows, with Alt plus F4, or Command plus Q on a Mac. If you have multiple instances of the application running, it is of course necessary to close all of them. Only the last one running will communicate the seat release to our license server upon exit. An important word of advice. All users should be mindful and considerate of others, and exit the application when they no longer need it, so as to release the seat and render it available for someone else in the organization. When just switching focus to another application, Hackalade Studio remains active in the background and continues to occupy the reserved seat. Also important is the fact that you must exit the application gracefully in order to allow for the application to communicate with our license server in the cloud and release the seat. Just rebooting the machine while Hackalade Studio is running does not release the seat, neither does closing the remote desktop session. If this situation ever happened accidentally, don't worry. You just need to access the application again, then exit it elegantly, and the seat will be released as expected. Similarly, if you notice in the license information screen that a user seems to be holding on to a seat, you may ask them to simply access the application again, then exit all instances. Let's go back to the link and observe this in real time. Currently Hackalade Studio for my license key is not running anywhere, not on my desktop, and not on the virtual machine either. In the license information screen, if I paste my license key and click the OK button, we can see the license key details, including the maximum number of simultaneous seats, currently just one, and we can see that no seat is currently used. If I start Hackalade Studio, the software communicates to our license server, checks if a seat is available, and if yes, then it reserves it. When we check the license information screen again, we can see that the seat is now taken. If I create a second local instance of the application, we can see that it still only takes one single seat. Now, if I close all instances of the application gracefully, the application communicates with our license server and asks to release the seat. We can see in the license information has indeed been released. The order in which the different instances of the application are closed does not matter. The communication only happens upon closing the last instance. 
Let's go now to the virtual machine and simulate another user starting Hackalade Studio. In the license information screen, you can see that the seat is being reserved now. If I try to start Hackalade Studio on my machine, since the only available seat is already taken elsewhere, I get a message that there is no seat available for me to access the application. When the other user exits the application, the seat is released, and I can now access Hackalade Studio. Let me now change the setup of the key on our license server by bumping the number of seats to two units for that license key. Note that this is only possible in reality if you purchase additional seats from Hackalade or through one of our authorized resellers. Now that the number of seats has been increased to two, it is now possible for me to access the application. And this is reflected in the license information screen when I update the page. Now, what if a user exits the application, but in a non-conventional manner? For example, by shutting down the RDP session while Hackalade Studio is still running, or by rebooting the whole machine, or using the task manager to kill the process. Hackalade Studio never had a chance to communicate with the license server and ask to release the seat. However, the solution is really simple. The user just needs to access the application again, then gracefully exit it, and the seat release takes place this time. We can verify in the license information screen and validate that indeed the seat is now released. We now conclude this video, hoping that it answered all the questions you had on the behavior of concurrent license keys for Hackalade Studio. If you have any other question, don't hesitate to contact our help desk at support at